Hello, it is Friday, February 25th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Friday puzzle today, so our first themeless puzzle of the week, and I suppose the second most difficult, possibly, until the until, uh, second to tomorrow's, probably. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, but first, I would like to thank a few people. I would like to thank Resmi, Jake Rodkin, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster for supporting this edition of The Daily Solve um, through The Daily Solve Patreon campaign. They're all benefactors of The Daily Solve Patreon campaign, and if you'd like to join their ranks, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve. And there's a link in the description field underneath the video, of course. That's the way you can help contribute to this channel and make this series a sustainable part of my daily work. And thank you to everybody who has done so at any level for any amount of time. Um, Supporting the Patreon at any uh, at any of the tiers will get you access to all of the uh, bonus videos that have gone up to date, as well as the new ones each week. And of course, it's Friday, so that means it's time for the weekly uh, mini puzzle speed solve. Um, also up there this month has been a uh, constructor's corner uh, solve of several puzzles constructed by the community in the uh, Daily Solve Discord chat server constructor's corner channel and the New York Times monthly bonus puzzle, the New York Times acrostic this month. So... Uh, all sorts of things up on there. Um, anyway, all that said, let's solve today's Friday crossword. This is a, a puzzle constructed by Damon Kulzinski. I've recognized the name. He's done uh, several dozen New York Times puzzles, so pretty experienced constructor, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's see what we have in store for us today. We have some fairly long answers here in both the acrosses and the downs, but also some quite short ones to, to, to start off. So let's see what, what this is. Brightness measures. Brightness, measures of brightness. I'm not sure. I, I hope I'll recognize it when I see it, but I'm not certain. A movement? I don't know. It could be an act. It doesn't seem right. What about this? Not agreeing in a dispute, say. It could be con as opposed to pro. And that would allow this to be act. It doesn't feel right, but here we have blank school. I don't know. Law school, med school. I'm not sure. I'm going to delete con. Let's just march through the puzzle as normal. One sense. One sense. Does that mean one of the classical senses? Sight, sound, taste, that sort of thing? Touch? Eh... Not sure. Home of Mount Mount Aconcagua. I'm not sure offhand. Sort of recognize the name, but I'm but I'm not sure, so I'm not going to put a guess in. Not agree in a dispute. Say right. We saw that lashes could be whips. Does that seem likely? Actor Crothers. I don't know. That sort of seems familiar, but I can't bring anything useful to mind. Chief inspiration for the Mannerist style of art. It'll be interesting to see the answer. Boy, I'm not getting anything yet. Kazan of film. Um, Ilya Kazan? Is it Ily or Ilya? It's one of those, isn't it? Naval Gazer's Discovery, maybe. Naval Gazer's Discovery. Lint, maybe? One sense. Oh, that could be smell, if this were lint. And streaming impediments could be lags. I mean, you wouldn't really say it that way. You wouldn't say, all these impediments in my way, these lags. You would just say, the lag. But given the sort of forced plural, I think that's probably right. Oh, lashes could be cilia. So not lashes as in... Um, whipping, but lashes in as, as in eyelashes, which are a form um, anatomically of cilia, uh, which are the, the um, you know, you get cilia in microscopic creatures as well, little, little sort of antennae. I don't know what the proper word is. I'm sorry. I'm no biologist. Oh, is this Scatman Crothers? I was wondering if that's who it was. Scatman Crothers was, um, among other things, famously in The Shining. And that was my first thought, but I didn't know if we would be using a kind of nickname 
in here, but I suppose that is what he went by. So fair enough. Breezing through could be acing. I don't really think I'm breezing through or acing this crossword today. And all right, Kazana film, and then chief inspiration for the Mannerist style of art. Oh, is it Michelangelo, possibly? Oh, must be. Okay, that fits perfectly. So that's nice to get a good long good long a uh, answer in the grid to give me some crosses here. Okay, so th this feels like we've got a bit of a break-in now. So if, if something developed into something, it became it. Symbol for torque in mechanics. Is it tau? Not certain about that, but I'm but I think it might be. So I'm going to put it in and check the crosses. Counterpart to projections in accounting. Actuals, as in projected profits versus actual profits. That's my suspicion here. And classic 1942 film based on the book subtitled A Life in the Woods. Um, well, A Life in the Woods is a subtitle of Walden but I don't think I know the film on which it's the film that it was inspired by, or sorry, that inspired it. That's what I should say. Um, question of foe indignation. It could be moi. That's sort of, that's sort of the sort of the, the sort of thing you hear. Moi, me, you're using the using the French to to heighten the the indignation, add a sort of level of formality, I suppose. Um, I'm not sure, but that might be the answer. What about this? It's tempting. Oh, seduction. <laughs> so this is one of those this is one of those answers where um, it's tempting is not a definition of seduction. Um, temptation would be a definition of seduction. So every once in a while, you get one of these clues where instead of being strictly a synonym or a definition, it's describing the clue. And that's here. We're saying seduction, it is tempting. Seduction is tempting, is, is what this is saying. So not, not defining, but rather describing the answer. And that just, it happens sometimes. Usually, the most common version of that is when there's a, an exclamation point at the end. Perhaps we don't have it today because it's a more difficult puzzle and we need to figure it out for ourselves. But it's is also tends to be a clue, a pointer in that direction. Okay, what about this? They often appear by thumbnails. Well, it would be plural, right? They often appear by thumbnails. So this could be obviously thumbnails on your fingers, or it could be thumbnail images, which are small, small images that are on the, well, not just on the internet, but in the case of an internet of an internet usage, they will link to a larger version of something. So what would that be? I would have said icons or something, but that doesn't fit. Who blank? Who isn't? Or who ain't? Who can't? I don't know. Is it? Isn't? It seems the most likely, but... Oh, Bambi. Oh, maybe this isn't Walden. I thought Walden was subtitled Life in the Woods. Maybe that's unrelated. I don't know. Uh, so I guess the film Bambi is based on a book subtitled A Life in the Woods. I'll have to look this all up later. They often appear by thumbnails. And who, this does look like who isn't now with that I and the N in that, those positions. One represented by a blue and white flag with four fleur-de-lis. Um, I'll have to come back to that. And here, Western wildflower named for its distinctive shape. Interesting. Here we have took off on... Took off. Took off on. Sort of fled, but the on means... So took off on a bike, for instance. You took off on. I'm not sure what that's saying exactly. Proficient in. Could be good at. Sometimes it feels like I'm good at crosswords, but not right now. <laughs> network connections could be nodes. You could have nodes of a network. Homegrown, natural, or native. There we go. If something wasn't overturned, particularly in the case of, say, a court decision, the court decision stood. It wasn't overturned. Big name in cosmetics. Oh, I think Avida, that, I think that looks familiar to me. 
as a cosmetics brand. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Alternative to a blind in poker. I'm not sure. Would it be an ante? I'm not, I'm not actually sure about that. Certain something. Oh, maybe it is an ante because certain something is often, um, often a French phrase is often used here. Je ne sais quoi, which, which literally means I don't know, but is used idiomatically in English to refer to um, some quality that you can't quite define, but is, but is special. Certain something. Your mileage may vary, but, oh, but that's just me. All right, I'm getting, I'm getting most of these long answers. That's nice. That's helpful. What about, let's return to this top part of the grid. Not, not agree and dispute, say. Okay, so it's not con. Um, although that wouldn't have made sense anyway, now that I look at specifically how this sentence is formed. Yeah, so sorry about that. Um, I don't know. And here we have, oh, it could be med school now that we have that, that D. What about this movement? Aim or? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, oh, this must be um, Quebecois, someone from Quebec. One represented by blue and white flag with four fleur de lis. Okay, I didn't, I didn't come to mind simply by reading the clue, but now that I can see that it is, uh, now that I can see it is Quebecois, I can sort of picture that flag in my mind. Um, but yeah, I didn't didn't get there on my own. Oh, brightness measures are IQs, right? Of course, I wasn't bright enough to see that this is referring to brightness, meaning human intelligence, as opposed to. Um, brightness of, say, a light bulb. I was thinking of lumens and things like that, and I was trying to imagine, are, is there a shorter form of that or an alternative measurement, that sort of thing. Oh, so a movement could be an ism, I see, right? Uh, so socialism, for instance, um, a, a movement, an ism, as one might say. And then what is this? To not, uh, to not agree in a dispute is to sue, to um, take legal action. To not agree in a dispute, you're going to sue. Uh, and the say means that these things aren't exactly, one isn't a definition of the other. So to not agree in a dispute doesn't intrinsically mean to sue, but the say means, well, this is an example of that thing. Suing is an example of not agreeing in a dispute effectively, but not the only example. Ah, they often appear by thumbnails. So bios, right? So this is a case where this wouldn't necessarily need to be the internet meaning of thumbnail. So this could be a thumbnail image in a you know, biography of an author on a dust, dust jacket of a book, for instance. Um, so bios, biographies often appear by thumbnails. Western wildflower named for its distinctive shape. Okay, so this will be a shape of some sort, but I'm not sure. Took off on, and here we have go around and around. And what about this? Hawaiian, e.g.? Hawaiian, e.g. So is this the Hawaiian language or a Hawaiian person? Or what is this? What does this mean? I'm not sure. And here we have kind of leg. Here we have alternative to a blind in poker. This looks like it probably is anti. I'm always never completely confident about poker terminology. Come to. And the two in parentheses means that we're going to be able to append the two both to the clue and to the answer. So that's what it's in parentheses to indicate it's not just part of the clue. It's part of the answer as well. Um, but is that helping? I don't think so. Sorry. Spot for a daily assembly. A daily assembly. I wonder if this means you sort of, this is something you assemble every day. Could it be some sort of shelf? Here we have Exile of 1302. And here we have Dropsy, clinically. So the medical name of Dropsy. And here we have No Yeast Feast. <laughs> is it a Seder? Win over. Womped but good. It probably ends in an ED. 
one leader of the Army of the Potomac and home of Mount Aconcagua. Is it the Andes? Come to... Oh, you could... Right, what are you going to come to? What are you going to amount to? That works. What was this again? Right, want but good. So this is... You'll really have beat somebody in some kind of contest, but probably in some sort of slangy way. Is it oft, maybe? Doesn't seem quite right. Oh, it could be owned. And is Dante exile of 1302? One leader of the Army of the Potomac. Dropsy, clinically. Win over. Oh, endear. Is this an enema? Spot for a daily assembly. Oh, news desk. News desk. So I don't know if this is specifically referring to assembling the news, assembling the daily paper at a news desk, or if it means the sort of huddle around the news desk to discuss the day's news. But in any case, I do think this is the answer. So is this mean? I don't think I recognize this name. I don't think this is an enema, though. Dropsy isn't an enema. Dropsy is a, a condition. Um, mead? Sounds better than mean, and I'm, I'm confident this isn't enema anyway. All right. I think this must be Dante. I think this is probably mead. Fort mead maybe refers to this person. This is a tough cross, I think, at least for me. Um, I think this is probably right. I'll remember this might be the weak spot if the puzzle doesn't validate, but we'll come back to it. Um, so quid pro quo. I mean, it could you could call it a swap. Quid pro quo, I'll do something for you if you do something for me. Yeah, it has a bit, it has sort of a different connotation to just saying swap, but it is, I think is literally true. So I'm going to put it there for now and we'll see. Much visited website run by a nonprofit foundation. Oh, Wikipedia. It's run by the Wikimedia Foundation, I think. It's usually in short supply for new parents. Um, sleep, I would assume, or uh, peace and quiet. I don't know. It's usually in short supply for new parents. I'm not sure. Quash. To quash something could be to kill it. And practiced sedulously. Practiced sedulously. Carp variety. Koi is a variety of carp. Plied. It's implied a trade. And here we have, it's usually in short supply for new parents, right? Oh, alone time. There we go. Okay. Hawaiian, e.g. I wonder if this is something else that's often referred to as Hawaiian that isn't literally referring to the actual state or islands of Hawaii. And it's a bit of a misdirection. I can't quite, I'm not quite sure. Why do I not see what that is? Here we have got in a lather. Got in a lather. I don't know. This looks like quiet as well, doesn't it? Oh, I don't know why I said as well. I guess I was thinking of alone time as being quiet, but it's it's a different word. So this does look like quiet. Comment to somebody, to someone who talks too much. Uh, is it, will you be quiet? Yes, it is. Okay. Will you be quiet? Francis Blank, love story composer. I'm not sure. Kind of leg. Not sure about that either. What about this? Italian place whose name comes from a Greek word meaning I burn. Oh, is it... Is it Etna? Because that's a volcano. I'm not sure. Step up, perhaps, and dug out, e.g. And Pennsylvania Avenue VIP. Well, that would be POTUS, the President of the United States. So this probably is Etna, actually. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Assuming that holds true, anyway. <laughs> Comes from a Greek word meaning I burn. That's interesting. Special bars for shoppers. UPCs, universal product codes, I think. Maybe something like that. The barcodes. Punt, e.g. 
Um, and dugout, e.g. And step up, perhaps. Stare, a stare, a so. Step up, perhaps, looks like a verb, but I think in this case it may actually be a noun. A step up, a stare. So punt could be boot. You could punt somebody out of your house. Dugout, e.g. Punt is also a, a boat. It's a small boat. Um, is a dugout a canoe? What does that mean? <laughs> feels like there are quite a few things in this puzzle I'm going to need to look up. I don't quite understand this. It feels like this has to be canoe because this is going to need to be a vowel between the S and the R. So if, it, if it's an E, oh, trouser leg, right, kind of leg, trouser leg. This is a tough puzzle, I think. Dugout, is it a canoe? I don't quite know what that means. I'm sorry. So got in the lather. Oh, soaped. Okay, that was more straightforward than I was thinking. I was I was trying to invent some misdirection and imagining got in a lather because that can also mean got very angry. But this is just literally referring to soapy lather. Oh, oh, right. This is misdirection. So Hawaiian is an airline. So, I mean, it's probably headquartered in Hawaii, but but it isn't you know, but it's it's a name of a corporation as opposed to something that describes Hawaii itself or the Hawaiian people. So that's there, that was indeed a bit of slight misdirection there. Hawaiian is an airline. And what else do we have here? What have we not seen, actually? I should probably, probably investigate that. That tends to be helpful. They get what's coming to them. Don't know, but it probably ends in S. And some military choppers... Um, that refers to helicopters, presumably. Helis or helos or something. That's probably a or Hueys. Isn't that isn't that the name of a military helicopter or nickname or something? Strip that's been mowed. I don't know. Rice dish. Um, could be pilau rice. You see that more you see the spelling more here in the UK. In the US, I would think pilaf more common. Uh, pilau, more common here in the UK. Um, so it's sort of surprising. Um, but I think that might be the answer because I do think this is probably Huey's. Okay, go around and around. Spiral, maybe. There you go. There, that, that works. So strip that's been mowed. Is it a swath? What makes that mowed specifically? I mean... Yeah, when I with that W there, even before spiral, swath did seem it, said, it seemed like a temptation. It seemed like a seduction, but but I didn't. Uh, is there a specific meaning of swath that means it's already been mowed, as opposed to just being? I would just think of a swath as you know have you could describe it in any particular. It's, it's swath of land could have any particular quality. I'm not sure, but I think it is probably the answer. So put off. Could be table. Um, here's a. <laughs> this is a common. Speaking of differences between uh, UK and US English, this is a very common source. Actually, I find of uh, sort of corporate miscommunication because the two <laughs> words have, or rather, the one word has basically opposite meanings in the US and the UK. In the, in the US, it would mean we'll table this, we'll put it off, we'll discuss it later, and in the UK. Uh, it's, it means we're tabling it for discussion. We're putting it on the table, basically. It's, um, I think it maybe. well, I don't know if it derives from, but it's certainly um, also used in that context in parliamentary discussion. Anyway, that can cause, um, uh, that can cause, as you would expect, some very surprising uh, miscommunication outcomes. Okay, so anyway, ha huh could be I'll be. Ha, huh, I'll be. It's funny, by the way, that we have those two crossing each other. Coincidence, I imagine. 1980s sitcom title role for Jane Curtin. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, Star Lily, this must be. I don't think I know the Star Lily. Western wildflower named for its distinctive shape, Star Lily. Okay. Well, now I've learned it, and presumably it looks like a star. Okay, they get what's coming to them. And 1980s sitcom title role for Jane Curtin. Oh, and we have a few over here as well. I didn't notice that. Pulled off. Well, that could be simply did. I pulled it off. I did it. Fair enough. And qualifier in a text could be IMO. In my opinion, it's a qualifier. I'm qualifying 
this, this statement. It's only my opinion. And Marty's pal in Back to the Future, that's um, do the doctor, Doc. I don't know if he was actually a doctor. <laughs> Doc, whatever his name was. And post uh, Christopher Lloyd, I remember the actor's name anyway, even if I don't remember the Doc. Did he have a name? He must have. Anyway, post Manhattan Project organization. Is it the American Enemy, uh, Energy? <laughs> Enemy. American Energy Commission or something like that? I mean, I'm certain this is Doc. Okay. 1980s sitcom title role for Jane Curtin. Is it? Oh, right. It must be Allie because this could be payees. Payees get what's coming to them. Um, the payees are paid. And took off on is aped. Oh, I see. I haven't really seen this used this way. You could say you aped someone. You it was a take, you know, a takeoff, a, a spoof or a parody. I don't really see he aped her. He took off on her. That isn't really usage with which I'm personally familiar, but I sort of get what it's saying. Does this work? It does. Okay, good. I'm relieved. <laughs> There were, I think, two crosses, maybe, that I was, well, no, maybe it was just this one. Yeah, I think it was mainly this cross up here, Edema and Mead. I thought there was maybe another one. I think maybe I, for, for a moment down here, but I think this all, this all ended up coming in pretty, out of, oh, no, no, it was this canoe thing. Yeah, it, it wasn't any specific cross. I just didn't really, I just didn't really, I don't really know what canoe dugout means. Someone will tell me, I'm sure, now that I've said that I don't know. I found this to be a pretty tricky Friday. Let me know how you fared. So I think we had fairly tricky Mondays, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday this week, I will say. Wednesday and Thursday, maybe a bit more, a bit more typical, maybe even slightly easier for those days. Um, but this I this I found a little a little tough. And um some good long answers. Uh some more, <laughs> some more um I, I suspect some more debut answers. Now I'm really preoccupied with that. Apparently there were seven, someone looked it up in a comment and said there were something like seven, um, uh, seven debut uh, answers in yesterday's puzzle. So that, that's sort of, sort of incredible. I bet Will You Be Quiet is one of them though. But that's just me, could be. Seems pretty likely as well. I don't know. Uh, there's no point guessing, but... Uh, yeah, a fun puzzle and certainly a challenging one, I thought. Let me know how you fared. Um, some real misdirection in here. Hawaiian EG is an airline. I don't think Hawaiian Airlines is a household name, even in the United States, I, I wouldn't say. Um, and then some some interesting uh, bits of trivia, like uh, Home of Mount Aconcagua, Aconcagua, and what was the one that I found interesting that I was trying to think? Um Yes, it was this. This was very interesting. Italian place whose name comes from a Greek word meaning I burn, Etna. That is that is uh, a great fact, and I'm glad to know it. Um, yeah, an interesting puzzle. I found it tough to break into, especially at the beginning. Um, I thought these short three-word, three-letter, I should say, three-letter words were going to be an easy way in, but I didn't, uh, I didn't see it. This brightness measures threw me off movement, ism, these are, IQs and isms are, are both, they're both relatively straightforward, but they're clued so vaguely, or in the case of brightness measures with a bit of misdirection, uh, that they're hard to get without any crosses, or at least I found that to be the case. Anyway, let me know how you fared. But for now, let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. And there are, I think there were several, in fact. So let's get to it. What do we have? So <laughs> Zio R95 says, regarding the Keystone Cops, the classic bumbling characters, I'm not surprised you haven't seen any Keystone Cops films as the last one came out in 1917. It's amazing how we still understand the reference. You do often hear sports commentaries refer to particularly bad defending as Keystone Cops these days. Yes, that's true. I did look this up. And to be fair to all of us in the culture, um, the Keystone Cops, it's true that their own actual film series did end. It ran, uh, the, that franchise sort of came to its own end in 1917, but the Keystone Cops as a collection of characters did occasionally pop up in other places. Like the, I think it, there was a cartoon short they appeared in. And I think as late as the 1950s, they were in, uh, there was a film that was, I think it was Abbott and Costello 
meet the Keystone Cops or something like that. So they did stick around in the culture until until at least the 50s uh, in, in some kind of major media form. So that, that explains, I think, what, probably why they've, why they've remained in our public consciousness. Um, James Dickey explains, a leaf cutter is a species of ant. They cut leaves up and drag them to their nest. Makes sense. Uh, Remy says also, they can be quite big. They're crispy outside and sticky inside. And I don't think I would eat one again. Um, although I have eaten ants, actually, now that I think about it. I've eaten sort of candy-coated ants in, some, in a restaurant that had that as a thing. Uh, Dragon Traces also adds, the leaves are used to cultivate fungi, certain parts of which are eaten by the ants. Different species of leafcutter ants cultivate particular species of fungi. Really fascinating societies. That is incredible. It is absolutely amazing what sort of evolutionary processes have produced. I mean, that is just, that kind of thing is unbelievable. That ants cultivating fungi with these leaves. It's, I don't know. That's amazing. Cameron explains that the lonely goat herd is a reference to the song in The Sound of Music, which features yodeling. Admittedly, though, my first experience with it is through Gwen Stefani's 2006 hit, Wind It Up, which samples it. Um, I must admit, I'm not familiar with it through either <laughs> through either uh, cultural touchstone. Um, I, I think I maybe have seen The Sound of Music, but it would have been so, it would have been ages ago, and I'm not sure I've ever seen it straight through. Mike Crawford explains that velars, V-E-L-A-R-S, velars, are consonants articulated with the back part of the tongue against the soft palate. I must have been asleep in class that day because I was totally clueless. Thank goodness for the crosses. Indeed, I was pleased for the crosses as well. Um, ADYJ1411 says, this is correct. The soft palate is also called the vellum, hence the name velar. If you pronounce the G and K, you may feel the tongue against the back of your mouth. Oh, the the gu, the right, the gu and ka. That's true. You can you can feel it back there. And Rick De Natale says, I remembered velar as part of another consonant descriptor, the velar fricative. A um, couple more. Boy, this was quite a day of, of explanations. Kathleen Quinn says, Turkey, common entree for Thanksgiving Day, contains L-tryptophan, an amino acid that's often linked with sleep. A high consumption of turkey along with the rest of the feast uh, reportedly results in approximately 60% of people feeling the need to take an, a nap. And spiral, spiral in Your Eyes follows up with a bit of uh, clarification and says, it looks like that's mostly a myth. You would need to consume an absurd amount of turkey for the tryptophan to have that uh, effect. So scientists say you're likely just tired because of overeating. Fair enough. And Mark Owen clarifies, sloth is one of the seven deadly sins, which that I did, I did remember that one, but he says they're also called the capital sins. That I did not remember. <laughs> the other capital sins are pride, envy, gluttony, greed, lust, and wrath. I think I probably could have named the seven if pressed. I don't know. I should have tried. Now it's too late. I'll never know because I've already read them. And finally, Kathy Swope, speaking of Cream, the, the band Cream and their double album that was referenced in yesterday's puzzle, uh, Cream followed the album's Fresh Cream and It Israeli Gears with its third and best-selling album, Wheels of Fire, 1968, a mixture of studio and live recordings densely packed into two records that became the first platinum-selling, over one million units sold, double album. So there we have it. And that's it for the comments. That was a marathon of comments and context and trivia and knowledge for uh, stemming from yesterday's puzzle. So thanks for sticking with it, if indeed you have done so. But you're here listening to me say this, so you have, so thanks. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel if you if you haven't done that. Um, I would appreciate it. Um, we've gotten, we had a, a burst of, of new subscribers for a couple of days there. It seems to have died down a bit. I'm very curious to know how that sort of thing happens. Uh, so thank you to everybody who has subscribed over the last few days. And um, everyone who's found the channel newly through whatever means, I'm, I am curious to know how you stumbled upon this. If it was just YouTube recommending it to you or if it was linked from externally. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. I can't really do anything to to uh, cause more of that to happen, but, but uh, you know, I see the numbers and I have no idea what they mean. Anyway, um, there is also the Daily Solve Discord chat server if you're interested in interacting with other members of the Daily Solve viewing community. It's a nice community over there, and you can also solve uh, crosswords made by members of that community and help give feedback on them. It's a really nice thing over in the Constructor's Corner channel. And I think that's it. I'll be back tomorrow for the Saturday crossword, of course, the most difficult crossword of the week, most likely this week. Who knows what that means? It could be quite tough. Or maybe it'll be a little bit easier to balance it out. No way to know. You'll have to find out tomorrow. 
I hope you do, but until then, please have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Mm-hmm.